Hey, I'm Greg Davis, and you're watching Show and Tell Gospel. Keep it locked. Let's just tell us about yourself, who you are, what you do. I always thought of by saying I'm the son of a prostitute. My mother was a prostitute. Um, she was a call girl, and I was raised in New York until I was nine, and my father asked if I could um, move to Detroit. And I met my grandparents, which was Reverend Ananias Davis and First Lady Jenny Davis. And at nine and a half years old, I received Jesus Christ as Lord, and my life was changed if it wasn't for my grandparents. I thank God for my father and my mother making the right decision for me. It's the best decision ever made. But uh, that's, that's who I am. That's where I come from. My mother was Italian and Creole, so I'm, I got a little half in me, a little <laughs> bit of for real, for real. I would have been Gregory Cagnoletti had my father not allowed her to use um, his last name. And my grandparents are my heroes. They raised me and um, skipped over my dad. And I am a second generation preacher. And I fought it because I saw what he went through. But I'm happy that I accepted the calling 32 years later of preaching now. Wow, 32 years. 32 years of preaching. That's a long time. It seemed like it was yesterday. I'm not even 32. I know, but it seemed, don't do that. <laughs> But it seemed like it was just yesterday, though. I'm serious. Time goes by. And people ask me, I just turned 56. Um, you look good. Thank you. And people ask me, you know, do I feel, I don't feel it. I don't feel, I feel like I'm still like in my 20s or 30s, for, mm -hmm. for real, for real. Yeah. And uh, I come from good stock. My grandparents lived until, my granddaddy was 92. My grandmother was in her 80s. My dad just turned 80. Oh, wow. So hopefully... You know, I'll get that side of it rather than my mother. My mother died in her 30s, um, but I passed her years already, so mm -hmm. thank God. Yes, thank God. So you have been a part of the full gospel fellowship Day one. for, as yes. you were one of the founding bishops, actually. Mm -hmm. Before it even started, actually, we traveled around the country. It's actually 26 years old. We just celebrated 25, but we traveled a year consecrating everybody, mm -hmm. and I was the 14th bishop to be consecrated. 24 years come November. Wow. I've been a bishop. Wow. I wasn't even ready to be a bishop. You're right. <laughs> 24 years, that mean I was 38. You was adding. Uh, so I was somewhere in my 30s. We were all young. And we're not old now compared to some bishops in their 60s and 70s. But I'm grateful to see 25 years later with Bishop Morton started. Now it has been passed on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bishop Walker's doing a great job, but we actually changed a generation. Yeah. You were in a church that yep. that was a part of that change. Yeah, sure was. Literally. Sure was, yeah. I remember your pastor was an old Baptist preacher. He was a little different. <laughs> Bishop Jones, he was a little different. He was laying hands on folks speaking in tongues. And I went and knocked on his door, mm -hmm. and he refused to let me in. He said, I ain't going to let you in. And the rest is history. Yeah. 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 So we, we have a lot. We have a yeah. lot of long history. Yeah. yeah. So you said something really interesting, though. You said that when you became a bishop, you were not ready. No, I wasn't ready for a lot of things. And, you know, I feel like now in this day and age, people are almost like eager to become pastors or preachers or ministers. And so how did you know you were not ready? And then what was the process like of I didn't, ready. I didn't know I wasn't ready. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if I knew now what I knew, if I know then what I know now, I wasn't ready. And I didn't know I wasn't ready. And it caused detriment. When you're not ready, it, it's always a cause and effect. Mm -hmm. You can damage people. You can damage lives if you're not ready. And my damage was uh, I was so in the full gospel that I lost, I lost um, focus of my local church. I got us in debt trying to be over the state. Mm -hmm. Got us in debt made a, a move to Louisiana that I don't regret, but I do regret. You ever have things you regret yeah. and you don't regret? Yeah. It was good for me, but you damaged a lot of people mm -hmm. um, because we left abruptly. Bishop Morton actually moved us to start a church, but then our church back in Detroit, Second Unity, was in debt because I carried the state. It was something new. All the other bishops, all the other 13 bishops, Bishop Eddie Long, Bishop McClendon, Bishop Omer, they had great churches. Mm -hmm. I was the only one that had about 200 people and was trying to keep up at that level yeah. of people that I couldn't keep up with. And so somebody needs to listen to that. Know that you're not ready just because somebody, here's the key, just because somebody asks you to, to do something, don't mean you have to say yes. So it's almost like when um, they was called to be king, and it was at a really, really young age, but it wasn't mm -hmm. until he was ready, I guess you could say, yeah. until he was actually supposed to step into that call. Yeah. So, now you talked about there was a lot of people and a lot of things that you lost in that time. And you were once married actually during that time and you and your wife actually had 
built the church and it was going really good. We like actually that. hadn't built the church. We actually, I was on fast. We got we had married and we started pastoring a year later. Um, a little small church called Second Unity. We were on Moffitt in Pennsylvania. Uh, the church seated about 50 people. It was a little small. The choir stand was like like this. You, only like 10 people could stand on it. And we moved in six months wow. to the Boulevard in Gratiot. I don't know if you've ever passed that building. Seated 800 people. We had major conferences. We had majors. Uh, and then I saw Bishop Morton becoming bishop. And I called, made the call. So. The church wasn't ready. We were still getting to know each other. She got pregnant with Micah. Micah? Uh, she got pregnant with Micah. <laughs> that's one of your people. Um, she got pregnant with Micah. And all this was happening at one time. Wow, that's a lot. It was a lot. You have no idea. We brought Jackie McCullough, Noel Jones, all those people into the city. We was having major conferences. Church would be packed with all these major people. We had one conference where we had uh, Marvin Winans, uh, Keith Butler, Andrew Merritt, Wayne T. Jackson. In one week, we called it Faith Conference. All the major players mm -hmm. we had. And then on Sunday, I would sit there looking, and we had about 100 people in church. Wow. And because my mind always was ahead of where I was. Right. But just because your mind is ahead of where you are, it don't mean that you do it. And it's timing. I literally put us in debt because of that. Um, and back then, our, our church no one but about a, a nine hundred dollars. That wasn't that was that was a lot back then. But now it wouldn't be, and we had all this building. But it it our marriage suffered because we traveled all over the country, all over the world, building full gospel. Pastor Kim became my assistant. She, we were paid by full gospel. Wow. I developed the field. Most of the bishops, including your bishop, Bishop Murphy, they became bishops off of my recommendation, and it killed us. It it killed our marriage. Then the word network happened. And it grew us for, I had a home in Detroit. I had an apartment in Detroit, I had an apartment in Delaware. I had a house in, in Philly and was living between all three of those. Nobody knew that we weren't really living together. Our marriage was in shambles, wasn't even hardly speaking. I come wow. home from the Word Network, telling everybody rejoice in, in the Word. And come home, we had nothing to talk about, but the kids in the church, there was no romance, there was no, no nothing, nothing. And we grew apart. We built each other, and that's what we say now. When I go back and preach, she say, this is my hero still, boom, boom, boom. We got each other where we are. That was the success of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even right or wrong, but it, it, that's what happened. I mean, it's your story, you that's know? My sto yeah, it's that's your story. good, boy, you good. That's your story. <laughs> that is, that is my no story. No right or wrong to anyone's story, that's it's right. your story. Yeah, good. So, what was it like coming when you guys got to the point I'm going to use where, that, by the way. No problem. You, you're, you're, <laughs> I'm going to give that, you credit. That one is, that one is <laughs> you know, not just for you, Bishop. <laughs> so when you guys got to the point to where you said, okay, this is no more. We're going we're gonna to get divorced. How did you bring that to your congregation and kind of, I don't know if you have to advise them on like how mm -hmm. to seek other leadership? Now, or? you know me. I'm a planner, right? Mm -hmm. So I sought advice from um, Bishop Neil Ellis. He was, he's like a big brother to me. Um, Bishop Morton and those that were around me. And Bishop Neil Ellis was kind of the main one. And we actually, before we could do that, we had to talk to our daughter. Mm -hmm. We wasn't really concerned about our older kids. My daughter was finishing school. Um, she had two years to go. And we sat on the couch the Saturday before. And we told her that we were separating. She cried. She kind of like me though. When we got through, I said, you still going over to Delaware with me? She said, yeah. We get in the car, she wiped the tears. She said, we still going shopping? And <laughs> so I said, she'll be fine. The next day we had two churches. We had one in Delaware. We had one in uh, Philly. And we told the Delaware church first. And I spoke first and told them we're still good. We just have grown apart. And we will not speak of this again. Right. We will, after this Sunday, continue to preach the gospel feed you. She'll do it over in Philly. I'll do it over in Delaware. And they cried, of course. She got up after. Here's a classy woman. Mm -hmm. Pastor Kim is a classy woman. She got up and had remarks. She said, I want everybody to know that it's not him. It's us. Mm -hmm. And that Gregory Michael Davis is still my hero. Mm -hmm. She said this while we're making the announcement. And I'm like, dang. <laughs> so we go to the other church and told them. And, um, same reaction, we lost nobody. Mm. We kept preaching, kept running the churches. We lost nobody. The Lord spoke to me in Virginia and told me, 
So you're going back to Detroit, give up, give the Delaware church to her too. So that's why she's pastoring. People lied, said that the court told me to get, court can't tell you to give a church. And you know, I'm used to all that. But literally, I gave her the other church and she pastors both the churches. I go back there on Father's Day, I just mm -hmm. was there and yeah. preach. Yeah. And people look at us crazy like, <laughs> I just interviewed her on World Network, doing Full Gospel. We're good. She's dating somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I know who she's dating. He actually yeah. part of Full Gospel. And I mean, but we get along. Yeah. I mean, why do you have to fall out? Because yeah, you, you couldn't get along right. while you were married, but you get along now. Mm -hmm. So we, we take the mature way and try to be an example to other people that you don't have to go through all that drama. And we kept it. And not mind you, I'm going through all this while I'm on the World Network, talking to millions of people. Right. Every week, I'm publicly going through divorce. So how do you encourage somebody else when you're going through? Keep moving. It's that simple. I know that sounds like a cliche. Mm -hmm. Keep moving. Keep moving. And if you can make the marriage work, I said everybody that's working. I never forget because, you know, Pastor Jamal Bryan's um, situation was public too. Mm -hmm. So I can mention him. I called him. I said, I don't know anybody else to call. I don't know anybody else who went through public and was known. And I said, what should I do? And this is the words he said to me, if you can make it work, make it work. I don't wish the single life on nobody. Mm -hmm. And I tell people the same thing. If you can make your marriage work, make it work. See counseling. By the time we got to counseling with Bishop Morton, Pastor Deborah, it was too late. We was already, we, we were gone. I hear that a lot, like people seek out counseling when it's, yeah. it's pretty much a lost cause it was at gone. this point. And yeah. Bishop, oh, Bishop Morton was sorry, they were hurt. And because and the thing that hurt me is this one thing he said. He said, You all were such a great example. You all were like me and Pastor Deborah and I was like, oh. <laughs> You know, because you don't know people think that way about yeah. you. Y'all was he, he said this, he said, You all the power couple in full gospel. Mm -hmm. And it hurt him and it hurt me. But at the end of the day, I live by this time thine own self be true. Yep. And I'd rather be happy and alone than to be unhappy with somebody and make their life miserable. Right. So you gave the church up. So now you're no longer pastoring any churches at this point, but you're still preaching. But for, you're not about, pastoring. for about four years, I sat. I, I went to a couple of churches, and they were great churches. They just wasn't for me. And Lola mm -hmm. I kept it. talking, yeah, kept talking <laughs> to me about Triumph. Well, when the Triumph, when Triumph hit the city and grew, I wasn't here. Like during the Kwame time, I wasn't mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So I, I had heard about Triumph, but so I went to hear Marvin Sapp one day. He was preaching. That's my friend. And um, Pastor Kenlock knew me. We knew each other, but not like that. And so I went, didn't go back for a while. He was very kind. We'd see each other. And Lola kept talking about our church. So I finally went to Bible class. I loved it. That's mm -hmm. still my church home. Bishop Morton is my father in ministry. Pastor Kenlock, right before I came in here, he was calling me. And we're, 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 we're friends. He blessed me along the way, but I learned and I was healed. I set myself down. I didn't make a big announcement. Mm -hmm. I was still evangelized, but from pastoring. I wasn't ready to pastor. So I sat on that second row. Every night he asked me to pray. Then finally he asked me to do the bellway. I started preaching at some of the services, but I was gone most of the time. I didn't want nothing. I didn't sit in the pulpit. I wasn't there to be his buddy. I was there to heal. And I sat there and healed until God said it's time. So how did you manage to maintain the business, the brand of Great Davis Ministries, although you weren't pastoring anymore? Like you didn't, like, like you said earlier, like you didn't even lose, you guys didn't lose anybody, so how did you maintain that? Because I was known as an evangelist. From doing TV? From the, I was, well, I was an evangelist before I was TV. I was doing okay. Seven Days of Glory before TV. Okay. I was traveling across the country. I used to preach two, three hundred days out of the year before TV. That's what most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. People like you, you don't just show up doing something like this. So for all those haters, she didn't just, <laughs> didn't nobody give her nothing. You don't just show up. You intern. Yeah. You do little small gigs. You mm -hmm. be in people's face with the mic. Can I do this? Can I do that? You serve somebody else. You don't just show up. So before the word network, I was preaching all over the world because there was a network inside of Full Gospel and everybody called me the Black Benny Hand and so I was different. <laughs> I was different so they would invite me to come preach. Mm -hmm. And then to be honest, a lot of them wanted to be bishops so they would invite me and they knew I could. And it's, it's bad but right. it's the truth. But I was an evangelist so I kept the brand out there. Uh, I made up in my mind that I wanted to be a black evangelist that could, could live from preaching the gospel. They were only white, you know, Kenneth right. Copeland, Kenneth Hagin. Um, and either you pastor the church. I successfully sought out 
to be a successful evangelist. And I am, and I was, yeah. and that was before TV. Mm -hmm. TV just enhanced it. Right. You don't just show up on the scene. You're on the backside of the desert, and then you show up doing what you've been done, doing already. Before I got TV, I, I was just telling somebody this this morning, I would watch Paul and Jan, and all the, Pastor Kim and I would say to me, why you watch TV all day long and watch Christian television? I saw myself doing it, but not to this magnitude. Yeah. Because I was the first black to really host a major network Christian. TBN would do it mm -hmm. here and there. I call it Black Night. You know, because <laughs> you, you, you would see. But we, to have on Fridays a black man hosting, Kevin Adele was way ahead of his time. And so now, yeah, Bishop Bloom may have others doing it, but I kept myself out there. I always knew how to, and I always knew how to make moves at the right time. One of the things about success is knowing when to hold it, as Kenny Rogers say, and knowing when to fold it. We don't know when to fold it. Mm -hmm. There's a there's an expiration date to what I'm doing. I'm not going to do this forever. Mm -hmm. Y'all coming on. You know, don't yeah. let nobody move you out the way. Move yourself. That's good. Don't let nobody move you out the way. Move yourself. Yeah, move yourself when it's time. That's and good. I don't want to be 90 years old getting up to tell my, the great David show. Here come, here come. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah. So we're going to change gears just a little bit here. And I want to talk a little bit about your weight loss journey. That is something that you've been very, very open about. Um, so talk to us a little bit about weight loss, health, how you were able to heal yourself, no medications. In the midst of the divorce, I'm diagnosed, well, right after the divorce, I'm diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I'm going to the bathroom a lot. My friend Bishop Farmer said to me, it's either cancer, prostate, or it's, it's diabetes. Well, it was diabetes. And the doctor scared the heck out of me mm -hmm. and said, you could lose limbs, take this medicine. I refused. Make, make a long story short, what I did this morning is what I've been doing for eight years. I walked every day, twice a day, for eight months. By the time I got back to the doctor in 45 days, he cussed me out, prayed with me. He was an Italian elder of a church, and he prayed with me, told me all say you didn't take the medicine, you're crazy, boom, boom, nobody's ever been healed. He took the test one more time that day. I went and prayed for folk that night at church. By five o'clock the next day, they called me, they said, you don't have no more diabetes. I just had my annual checkup this year. I haven't had diabetes in eight and a half years. I've been wow. walking ever since April, eight and a half years, eight years ago. And I still don't have it. I'm good, no high blood pressure, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm still walking. I did wow. it this morning. And you gotta eat right. If you live right yeah. and eat right, weight loss belongs to you. Right. <laughs> so how much weight did you lose? Uh, 110. Wow. Yeah, I'm stable now. I went too far down. Mm -hmm. I, I had went to like 160, 165. I was like, now nah, I'm comfortable with it. I'm, I'm like 185, 190, mm -hmm. and I maintain that. And I got this little pinch right here, but I'm 56 years old. I'm good with that little pinch. <laughs> yeah, all right. I don't want to look bulky. Mm -hmm. I, I like you know, I like this look. Right. What were you at your heaviest? Uh, almost 300. Wow. I was a size 50 suit, 40, 50 suit. I wear 40, She didn't custom suits made then. I did. All my suits were custom. I literally had like almost 300 suits when they diagnosed me. And it's only so much you can take in, like a couple of sizes. Yeah. So I literally would bring them to church every Sunday and just give all, I gave all my stuff away. Wow. Literally gave it all away. And I start thrifting because I was losing too fast. Mm -hmm. So I start thrifting because I couldn't get that many suits made. And I start thrifting, and I love thrifting. I still thrift. Yeah, I love thrifting too. Y'all love find, thrifting. Y'all don't even know that half them suits y'all be trying to go and get made, they cost seventy five dollars, and then a hundred to get it tailored. <laughs> so you sat down from pastoring for four years, mm -hmm. and then you decided to come back. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, I missed it. Um, I'm getting older, and I've been to probably every state. I've preached for everybody. I've preached on big stages. I've preached on small stages. And now it's time for me to leave a legacy. Um, and so the Lord had gave me the name Celebration Church some years ago, and it just wasn't the right time. It's there we named the Church River of Life. And I went back to that name because this time, this go around, I don't have a partner in ministry to do it. Um, Pastor Dana is my daughter in ministry, but I'm kind of doing things by my own drum beat, me and the Lord, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so I decided to start church 
we just celebrated a year, um, and it's growing. Uh, it's growing at a good pace. And the thing about it, the real reason, I love to see people's lives develop, lives developed Sunday to Sunday. When you're an evangelist, you go in and hit it and quit it. You don't know what kind of impact unless you see somebody at a convention or they say, you prayed for me and I was here, boom, boom, boom. But I'm literally seeing people's lives change every Sunday. Pastor Dana really passes the church. <laughs> I, I'm the branding person, of course, you're not still doing yes. that. And I love the preaching part and teaching and developing and the vision part and all that. The outreach, that's where I'm at. The the little administrator and all that, she does all that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just not there no more. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to live a balanced life and we have 90 minutes of service, prayer, praise, worship in the word, that's it. And for mm -hmm. summer, we're doing 75 minutes. We're in and out. We have low down church. You've seen some of the clips. And it just don't take all that. Yeah. We don't have Bible class yet. We will start. I won't teach it. Mm -hmm. Pastor Dana will teach it. You know, and I told the people, I'm honest with the people. If that's what you want, this is, you got to be honest with people. Yeah. I'm just yeah. not going to kill myself. I've had a diff You're on chapter three of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm on chapter 23. <laughs> you got to know. That's why relationships don't work. Right. You got to make sure that even if you get with somebody in a relationship and they're on chapter three and somebody's younger or older, you got to you got to sit down and talk about what chapters you're in. Mm -hmm. Like I asked you when you have a baby. Y'all on the same chapter. Yep. He's good with that. He ain't rushing you, you ain't rushing him. Mm -hmm. The problem is people get in relationships of any kind, whether platonic, whether whatever, and they in different chapters. I got a little young evangelist, he's 24 years old, and he wants to be on the road all the time. I don't want to do all that. I take two or three engagements a month. I'm good. <laughs> he want to be out. He's doing a 15 day revival as we speak. He's in a different chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm in a different chapter in my life. I'm not ready to die. Right. But I'm just in a different chapter. Mm -hmm. So you know exactly like what's working yeah. for you, what's not, yeah. who to get through. And what I don't want to do. Yeah. Because it's the, you know, I know this is taped ahead, but this is a week that I'm really resting. But for you, anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I appreciate Because I'm in so a different much. chapter and I'm yeah. good with my, even this, I would have never came and did an interview in it. I'm, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm good with me. Yeah. That's the greatest thing that has ever happened in my life. That I am comfortable with me. Have you I, always been comfortable with you? Or did it take no, I wanted to be. I wanted to please everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I wear jeans on Sunday. I might show up in my hat. I'm. I might whatever. I, I my Jordans take up a whole room just by now. I ain't never been a <laughs> sneakerhead. I'm a sneakerhead now. I'm t-shirts, and I that's where I'm at. And it's authentically. I'm not trying. Somebody said, "Oh, you trying to be like the young people?" What does that mean to dress like? You know who I think I am? Russell Simmons of the church. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I want to, because he, he's always reached the other generation. Yep, yep, and he's yep, always yep. been him. I'm authentically me, and I challenge somebody to be you. I even notice how you interview him. You, you comfortable with you now. Mm -hmm. You used to be like, oh, bitch, I don't know. But <laughs> when the greatest thing that you can become is comfortable with you. Yeah. I am. That's I'm good. so comfortable with me. That's good. That's yeah. good. So tell the people how they can get in contact. We done? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. We done. Okay. It was good. No, it was good, good. Bishop Greg Davis everywhere. Mm -hmm. She taught me. You don't just have Greg Davis here and Reverend Greg Davis there. No. She did that. Bishop Greg Davis <laughs> everywhere. I still got my space somewhere too. So I'm everywhere, y'all. No, I'm just there. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, so you, don't, you don't do Periscope anymore. I, I do. You do? Yeah. My radio show, I do my radio show um, on Periscope, man. I, every now and then I get on, not as much as I used to. Instagram is the bomb. Yeah, it is. I'm, yeah, I'm, that's, yeah, that's that's, I, I live on Instagram. Yeah, I live on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But I do Periscope stuff. You got anything that might be coming up? Or tell people off the church how to, you know, Sunday um, mornings? We are located in Southeastern High School, 3030 Fairview, 9 a.m. Um, 90 minutes of praise, worship, and word and prayer. And we out. Join the Celebration Church of Detroit. Or go to the website, celebrationchurch.org. Uh, okay, and then I got this from you. Look into the camera. And I want you to encourage the young pastor who's trying to build his church, who may be married, not married, maybe going through the world. I just want you to encourage the next generation who's going to be standing on your shoulders. Young preacher, take your time. You, ha you, have, you have time. Time is on your side. Um, me, I have less days in front of me. That's how I 
be like 116 years old. <laughs> Who knows? I might be. Um, you have more days in front of you. And so take your time. Don't rush. The worst thing in the world is to try to do what I've done in 56 years, in your 24 years or your 25 years. You have time. Now, you can get there a lot faster, but you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. And then next thing, the last thing, learn to be yourself. Be authentically you. If you've been called to teach, teach. If you've been called to rap, do whatever you've been called to do. Don't do it like nobody else. Every generation have their own niche, their own thing. Find your niche, find your thing, be comfortable in it, and don't hate on nobody else. You're not in the same lane as them. You're not in the same race. Run your race and you'll get there faster. That's good. Well, guys, that has been all that we had today for Show and Tell Gospel, where we are always busy keeping God famous. My name is Paris L. Ritter. Make sure that you follow us on all social media at Show and Tell Gospel, and make sure you also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tune in next time. We'll have more great show and more great guests only here on Show and Tell Gospel. We'll see you next time.